Alrighty, here we go. All-State Sugar Bowl, Washington Huskies looking to punch their ticket to the national championship. Texas Longhorns have got a first and ten near the end zone. Now, the interesting thing about this game is Texas only has two timeouts. So, if they score here, they can, they can make it a two-point game. But then, they would need to get a stop on defense. And with only two timeouts, that means that if Washington just runs the ball three times, they could run the clock all the way down to like 20 seconds. So, Washington has a very good chance at winning. But you never know. Here's Texas. Quinn Ewers going to drop back to throw, and he throws it right over the head of his receiver, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Third and four. Uh, they, so they can still get a first down and make it first and goal. They have a, a minute and 15 seconds on the clock. Washington dominated the third quarter. It was 21-21 at halftime. Washington scored 10 unanswered points in the third quarter. And that is the difference in this game was that third quarter when Washington was so good. Drove down the field a couple times in the fourth quarter. Kicked field goals, made it 37 points. Michael Penix has been so good today. Here's Ewers, and it's batted away by the Huskies' defense. And now it is fourth and four. And that's going to bring out an interesting decision for Texas. Do you kick the field goal here, right? Because you you're going to have to get the ball back either way. Might as well take the points. And keep the hope alive. And it looks like that is exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, they sent out their field goal kicker. So they're going to make it a six-point game. And that would set up, likely, they're going to try at an onside kick and see if they can take the lead. Here's the kick, and it is through the upright. So 37-31 is the score with a minute and nine seconds to go. And now the question is, does Texas... They have to do an onside, I'm, I'm assuming. I don't see any reason why they would just do a regular kickoff because, yeah, with only two timeouts, Washington could run it down to about 20 seconds. Even if Texas did get a stop, they'd only have 20 seconds to score a touchdown. So, yeah, they're, do, they're definitely kicking it onside. Yeah, it's been a really good game. Michael Penix has had a fantastic game, over 400 yards, multiple touchdown passes, uh, he's like 30 for 38, so he's, you know, high completion percentage, throwing for yards, 77-yard dime in the first quarter to Polk, touchdown pass to McMillan, touchdown pass to Adunze. All three of those receivers, Polk, McMillan, Adunze, so, so good. All three of those guys are definitely getting drafted this year uh, in the 2024 draft, Michael Penix as well. And the Huskies' defense has made the plays when it counted. They've given up 31, but they did have a nice fumble recovery that was kind of essential because that fumble recovery led to a field goal that put them on top 34-21. So, yeah, Washington has played a really good game. Kalen DeBoer, got to give this guy some credit. Coach DeBoer has been so, so good this year for the Huskies. Never lost a bowl game. Never lost a game to a winning team yet. And, yes, Texas, uh, Washington is in the uh, – they got their hands team out there. And Washington's going to take a timeout to make sure they got the right personnel. Yeah, absolute thriller of a game. Washington went up 7-0. Then Texas makes it 7-7. Then Washington makes it 14-7. And then Texas ties it again at 14 off of a muffed punt. Washington muffed a punt. Michigan, by the way, the team who won, uh, who beat Alabama, they muffed two punts. So, you know, in a Washington-Michigan national championship, it'll be very interesting to see how many... What's the over-under for muffed punts in that game? I don't know what that would be, but that'd be an interesting line. So then Texas ties it up, then Washington makes it 21-14, and then right before halftime, Texas scores again, makes it 21-21. In the third quarter, Washington scores right out of the gate, 28-21, and then since then, Washington has kicked three field goals, Texas a touchdown and a field goal, so it's 37-31. And yeah, here it goes. Texas, they have not... Uh, a they have not had a successful onside kick in three seasons. Their last time they had a successful onside kick was in 2020. And they get a little fake. Oh, the fake out. And it looks like Washington is on it. Yep. Yep. Dogs recover. Wow. You know, I, I like the attempt there. That's a nice little trick play by Texas, but it doesn't work out. Washington jumps on the ball. Good job by the hands team.
And I think that should just about do it. Texas will need to get the stop, and they would have about 20 seconds left to drive the entire distance of the field. So unless there's a fumble or some kind of miraculous Hail Mary type of play, the Huskies are going to win this game. Penix Jr. is in shotgun. He's going to hand this off, I presume, and he does. And it's a gain of about one and a half yards. And Texas will, of course, take that timeout. Yeah, the coach knows what they need to do. He's telling them, just strip the ball. That's that's pretty much their only chance right now to win this game is if they get a strip. Um, and obviously Washington knows that, so they're not going to put the ball in harm's way. This is... You know, textbook, fourth quarter with a lead. Just hold on to the football. And if you have to take a, take a loss for a couple, couple more yards, then that's what you're going to have to do because the last thing you can do is fumble the football. There's Arch Manning there on the sidelines. Arch Manning was warming up in the third quarter but never came into the game. He has not played meaningful minutes all season. He did play a little bit in their last game of the season against Oklahoma. So here it goes again. I presume this will be another handoff to Dylan Johnson. Panic takes a snap, and it is. Johnson up the middle and gets about two, maybe three. So Texas takes the timeout. So third down, yeah, Washington will be able to take... You, you assume if the play takes about five seconds, and then the play clock could be another 40. So Washington can run this thing down to about 15 seconds and then they would be able to punt the ball to Texas. So Texas would have a time to pretty much attempt two Hail Marys. And maybe you bring in Arch Manning for those Hail Marys. I don't know. That might be the move for Texas if, they, if that's what they want to do. But I don't know. I don't know if Quinn Ewer's arm, maybe. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Michael Penix getting a little break in the sidelines. Yeah, Texas is out of timeouts. Obviously, Washington not going to throw the ball here because if you throw an incompletion, it stops the clock and gives them more time. So they are going to hand the ball off. And, yeah, you see Michael Panks' parents, proud parents. Their son has had a hell of a season. He is the first quarterback since Patrick Mahomes to have back-to-back 4,500-yard -back seasons. That's pretty impressive uh, in college football. And here he goes. He takes the snap one last time. Hands it off one more time to Dylan Johnson. And, again, wrapped up right at the goal line. So now it's a waiting game. And, yeah, this is going to go down to about 14, 13 seconds or so. And, oh, there's an injury. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. That works against Washington badly. Oh, and Dylan Johnson is hurt. That is a foul play by Texas. That is some foul pl I almost wonder if Texas knew exactly what they were doing on that. Because they they're thinking, we can stop the clock with an injury. Wow. You know, I, I, hate to, I hate to accuse Texas of deliberately injuring our player, but that almost feels like they did that on purpose. Let's watch this. He jumps on him. I don't know, man. He grabs him at the legs there. Eh. Hard to tell if they were trying to do anything differently there, but whether or not they, that was their goal, Texas is going to benefit a lot from injuring the Huskies' starting running back because now, dang, he's bad. Yikes, this sucks. This sucks for Washington. You assume he's probably not going to be able to play against Michigan next week either, so that's also a pretty big factor. And you know, at the very end of the game, man, that's very sad for Washington Huskies. Dylan Johnson's had such a good season for them. He has been such a good force. One of the better running backs in all of college football, one of the best in the Pac-12, and He's going to stick around next season. He'll be back next season, and he'll he'll be able to contribute again. 
and you know we'll obviously have to see if the team will be as good next year. But yeah, Dylan Johnson only forty nine yards tonight, but the kid has been really really good player all season long, and it sucks to see him grinding in pain like that. Man, that's that sucks. This is crazy because like. I started this video, there's a minute 25, and literally only 40 seconds have gone off the game clock, and this video's been going on for 10 minutes. That is wild. But that is just the nature of the last couple minutes of a, of a football game. Fourth and five now, and the clock has been reset to 50 seconds. Are they going to get to wind it down? They're not. Yeah. Wow. So here comes the punt, and there's a flag now. What is that? The Huskies have a false start? Oh, man. So Texas is going to get 50 seconds, no timeouts, and a chance to drive down the field for a game-winning touchdown. And this, this is interesting. You know, if if Dylan Johnson doesn't get injured there, the game's almost over. But now Texas gets 50 seconds, and this is the type of game where every single second counts. So the Huskies' defense now has to come up with a big stop. Fair catch, and are they going to call another? F oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You can You have to be more disciplined than that. You have to be more disciplined. Another false start? That's what the flag is? I thought that was going to be... I thought that was going to be uh, interrupting the fair catch. Wow. Kick, catch, interference. Of course. So how do you, how do you make this mistake? Like, I'm just confused. Like, okay, he tried to get out of the way, but... He he did try his best to get out of the way. Look at this. Yeah. He was just he had too much momentum. He was going too fast. Man. So you give him a, you give them an extra 30 seconds on the injury and now a free 15 yards on the penalty. Man. So now Quinn Ewers at the 30 has a chance for a game-winning touchdown drive. Now the Huskies defense has been in this situation before. They got a very crucial stop against Oregon State back in November. And that was a game when Oregon State had the ball midfield and they all they needed was a field goal. UW had a two-point lead and they got a fourth down stop to end the game against the Beavers. They also had a game-winning pick six against ASU back in October. So the Huskies... They've been in this situation before where their defense needs a stop, and they've gotten it. Every time they've needed it, they've gotten it. Let's see if they get it one more time. Second and 10. Ewers in shotgun. Going to throw. Overthrow. And wow, that was a bad pass by Quinn Ewers. Weird throw there. Weird decision there from the former five-star recruit. A lot of people think Quinn Ewers could be a first-round draft pick in the 2025 draft class. He is, has announced he's coming back for next season. He'll be a senior next year. And he projects as one of the best quarterbacks for next year's draft class. Third and 10. Uh, and obviously, Texas headed to the SEC next year, so the schedule will be tougher. But Quinn Ewers will be a year older, and he throws downfield, and it's caught. Oh, boy, it's caught. And Washington was looking for an offensive P.I. there, and they did not get that call. And, yeah, some handsy, handsy plays there, but he pushes off. Yeah, a little bit of a push-off there. I don't know. That may, that might, oh, wow, that's, yikes. Now, here's yours again, shotgun. Going to throw, airing it out, end zone, and it's almost picked off. Almost picked off there by the Huskies. Oh, my. That was a risky throw from Quinn Ewers. And now there is 20 seconds left, second and 10. And, oh, boy, now another injury for the Huskies. Oh, my gosh. This is nerve-wracking. Man, I'm, a, I'm, not even a, I'm not even that big of a Huskies fan, guys. I, I go to WSU. This is, 
this is not my team, but I am from the state of Washington, so I am still going to root for the Huskies. I'm not one of those, you know, never going to root for the Huskies because I go to, because I'm a Cougar fan. No, I'm a I'm a Washington State fan, so whatever whatever team is from Washington, I'll root for them. So the Huskies are my local. They're still my local D1 college. Oh man, wow, this this is nerve wracking. So it was thirty seven twenty eight, and I thought they wrapped that thing up, and now all of a sudden Texas has a chance to pull off one of the craziest final endings to a football game texas one in 42 <laughs> trailing by 13 or more points in the fourth quarter and they did trail by 13 tonight that is a crazy statistic i think washington's gonna find a way to get a stop i really do i just this defense has been so clutch all season and every time they needed to come up with a key stop they got it they got that key stop against the beavers they got a key stop against my Washington State Cougars in the Apple Cup, this this is a team who they have always showed up in the biggest moments. So I'm going to predict that they come out again and get another key stop. But this is, this is intense. At the 27-ish yard line, Ewers in shotgun again, drops back, going to throw. He's got a man, and he gets out of bounds. And I'm not sure, was he in bounds or not? They're saying it was a catch. Can we review that? Can we review that, please? Let's look at this. Oh, one, one foot. Yeah, he got it. College is only one foot, so he's got that. Oh, oh, wow. It is coming down to the wire in this game in the All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. This Wow. I started 17 minutes, and this is still not over yet. First and 10, and you know, the Huskies taking another timeout, and yes, they are. Oh, they're going to review it. Okay. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it was a completion, but I guess they're going to review it. So it looks to me like he, he's got that foot right there, but did he have possession? Okay. So that's the question now is did he actually have possession of the football? Looking at that angle, it looks like – I don't think mm, – I think that's an incompletion. Oh, yeah. They should overturn that because he did not – yeah, he doesn't have – he does not have possession of the football right there. That is an incomplete pass, my friends. And the referees, they better get this thing right. They're looking at this thing, and yeah, that's... So yeah, he was bobbling that football. He did not have possession until after he was out of bounds. If they call this a completion, I would be pretty shocked and blue really seems to think it was a completion these texas fans they are hoping that it is a completion the, the offense still on the field there come on overturn what Oh man, I disagree with that. I I've ah wow. Now, this is this is why people think college football is rigged. Like just I'm not saying anything, but this is why. Okay? Cuz ratings wise, they want Texas there oh, instead of UW. And now they're going to call a timeout. Yeah. Okay. All I'm going to say is I guarantee you more people are going to watch Texas versus Michigan than Washington versus Michigan simply because it's Texas. And I'm not I'm not trying to imply anything. But that sure looked that sure looked like a completion or like an incompletion. I I did not see him have possession of the football. And they called it a, they called it complete. They reviewed it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna speculate. I'm just stating the facts. That was an incomplete pass, and the referees, even after the review, they got that wrong. And the ratings would benefit from Texas winning this game. That's all I'm saying. Nothing else. All right, let's get back to it. 
I don't like to deal with conspiracy theories. Let's get back to the game. 37 Washington, 31 Texas. First and 10 from the 13. Ewers going to throw his running back out of bounds, and there's now 10 seconds left. They really didn't gain anything on that play, so it's going to be second down and 10. Steve Sarkeesian, one of the brilliant offensive minds in college football, a guy whose friendship with Kyle Shanahan has been a popular topic of conversation. Ewers again. He's got four receivers out there in shotgun. Going to throw. Going to throw. End zone. Out of bounds. Overthrows. And that was – he did not have anybody open there. Good coverage by the Huskies' defense. Great coverage by that secondary. They kept all those receivers under locks. And this is likely the last play of the game. Maybe they have time for one more. Third and 11, but really it's third and goal. You're not, you cannot go short of the sticks here because you have no timeouts. This is an intense stadium. Everybody is on their feet. Everybody cannot wait to see what's going to happen. Michael Pettix Jr., is ready to rush the field in victory if his defense can make a play. Four receivers. Ewers dropping back. Pressure coming. Throws it out of bounds, and there's one second left. Oh, ho, ho. great pressure there. And that's it. Oh, they're saying that's the last play of the game. Final. Let's see what the referees are going to say here. Is there one second left or is this game over? Oh, they're going to give him a second. Oh, my gosh. Again, what am I, what am I saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm really not implying anything. All I'm saying is, if I'm the commissioner of college football, which gives you better ratings? Why do they keep giving Texas extra chances in this game? Come on. All right, so this is this is going to be the last play of the game. One second left. Texas putting a stacked trip trips receivers the left side. Ewers going to throw end zone open, and he's incomplete. And that is the game. Washington Huskies are going to win this thing, thirty-seven to thirty-one. They are going to the national championship game. Quinn Ewers, multiple second chances in this game, and he still could not get the job done. And for a weekend, for a year of 2023 in which Seattle had to witness the Mariners fall apart down the stretch, the Seahawks fall apart down the stretch, but Seattle's 2024 getting off to a pretty darn good start as the Washington Huskies are going to get a chance to play the Michigan Wolverines next weekend in the college football national championship game. Ewers had his guy one-on-one. -on -one. He overthrew it, and the Huskies batted it away. Look at that. If he puts that a couple inches lower, that might have been a touchdown. Wow. Well, if you guys made it to the end of this reaction, that's awesome. If you didn't, I don't blame you. But thank you all for watching. Go dogs.